Joel did a really cool thing when we were, um, which I want to try at some point with the, the the theremin again in that other room. There's a big open room. Oh, yeah. Joel put a mic up by the amp and a room mic, and he also put a mic up against a wall. Uh. So it kind of got the noise uh, reverberating against the very large open wall. Huh. It was it was really nice. Half um, of that track was no good because there was a refrigerator on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know that. Yeah. So it was just picking up the fridge. Uh-huh. <laughs> But yeah. uh, strategically placed room mics are I'm I'm big into that. I think room mics make a recording so much nicer. I yeah. love putting room mics <laughs> facing a wall so that you get the bounce off. Yeah. 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 Well, they're so easy to set up, you know? It's like you get that one magic mic or that magic take or yeah. something and it's like you never regret having it mm-hmm. up and worst case you just like shit can the track and it's it's no loss, really. Yeah, or, or put that mic on its own track, and if you don't want that mic, just get rid of that track. Yeah. There's no harm in adding a second one because it, or a third one because it won't ruin your track. It's on its own thing, so just throw it out. And yeah. honestly, those were amazing theremin takes. <laughs> yeah, the Goblin Army. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> we were using a, a Blue Sky pedal. Oh, okay. On the theremin. Have you ever used one of those? Not personally. I've seen them around in different studios. No, because so. they're about $500. It's not <laughs> an Earthquaker. What is it? Um, uh, I forget the name of the company. I worked as a manager at a music store for a very long time, so I had to know, as a, as a woman... I had to know everything about everything or I was the stupidest, worst person ever. <laughs> and even when I knew everything about everything, my intelligence was constantly questioned and downplayed <laughs> by pay. It was, it was very aggravating, um, but I was sort of training this kid that worked there. He lent me this blue sky pedal to use with my theremin and it was fucking gorgeous. Yeah. I wanted to get one until I found out how much they cost. $400. <clears throat> 400 yeah. and change, almost 500. That's insane. If I had it my way, I would get one for my theremin tomorrow, but I don't. <laughs> Have you ever run a violin through through a distortion or anything? Yes, that's. I have run a violin and a cello through everything and anything. <laughs> um, you're talking about Earthquaker. If you have a violin, I recommend running it through an Earthquaker. What is it? The Ghost pedal, the Ghost Echo. Okay. Those are very nice. They're that's also like the spring reverb, right? They're also great for guitar. It, it 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 sort of has a spring reverb effect, but it has a little bit more versatility with that. That's why I love the Earthquaker shit because they were, I love the really versatile pedals. They're pedals that do one thing and have one or two knobs are fine. Mm. But um, as far as like the kind of more mainstreamy boutique pedals, I found that they were a great company and mm. I liked, I, I dug a lot of their stuff. I never got super into like the whole, the pedal scene overall, like over the years, but I, every time I find like a perfect one that I just love, like it, it's a good mm. feeling. There's something about those. Yeah. I've never gotten into them, but I love the two that I have, and I always find myself wanting more, but I know that I won't use them. You have to find the right stuff. A lot of people get into pedals, and they don't really know what they're looking for or what they want to buy, um, so they just collect a bunch of shit, and they're like, yeah. I don't really use this thing, but when I buy a pedal, I'm like, I know this is the thing I want. I'm a more of a sound sculptist. Yeah. I, I, I sculpt with sound, I, and I work with dissonance very well, which is, um, I think, a part of the mental illness, too. A lot of conditions of psychosis actually make you hear music different. Mm. You hear notes differently. And this, like, lifelong background in music and teaching music and shit like that has made me relate to it in a very unique way where I I understand the formula and I understand the theory behind it. But I'm always trying to push those boundaries and play sort of discordant things because that's how I hear them. Mm. Things that things that are very pleasing to others might be kind of disturbing to me because they seem off to me. Mm. So I sort of found sculpting sound early on and I got really into that and I like to I I like to manipulate electronics a lot and I think pedals are are a big part of that 
I, I can understand what they do from a mechanical perspective or a, an understanding actually using the thing and having experience. And I know the sounds that I want. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. So I'm I'm a wicked nerd about like pedals and electronics <laughs> and things. And it's it's its own thing. I mean, I don't think that and pardon my little bit of prejudice here, I don't think that somebody who makes a, a beats on a computer program can necessarily call them a musician. Mm. Can call themselves a musician, mm. but I think that somebody who learns to sculpt electronics in a very artful way it, it it's its own thing and i appreciate that and i think that that can be beautiful as beautiful as somebody who plays like joel on the acoustic guitar it's 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 its own thing and it's very different in its own skill set but i don't appreciate i don't not appreciate one more than the other because i'm mm. an absolute purist and this is music and this is not yeah. i'm not as prescriptivist with it yeah yeah but that said, like, I've had that same thought. I think that someone making beats on a computer is, like, totally valid as a composer. But given that they're not playing an instrument, I hesitate to say musician, you know? Yeah. I think a, a composition is just as valid as playing music if someone gets to hear it and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. someone can lay down some good beats and shit like that, but it's not being a musician. It's mm. understanding a digital program. It's, like, people that do and... All right, I'm going to have this conversation right now, and I'm sorry if it offends anyone here, but people that do uh, artwork on their computers yeah, do painting and painting programs or whatever, and they call it a painting. I made mm. this painting. Mm. It's not the same thing. You can't yeah. call yourself an artist. You're, uh, you're playing a computer game, essentially. Mm. I mean, is a graphic designer an artist? Maybe they are. You know, maybe that graphic designer is an artist because they use their 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 medium in a very artful and provocative way. I'm not, you know, canceling out if you if you do photo editing or if you're a graphic designer, I'm not saying that you're an artist, but if you make a painting on some digital program in your computer and you call it a painting and I did a painting and look how good it you're playing a game. Like you're not you're not, you're not an artist. An artist has to know, like, levels of alchemy and, like, all kinds of different things. It's hands-on. Well, it's like I've known some people who will take photos but won't actually, like, share the photos that they took. Like, first they go into Photoshop and then they get, like, whatever color alterations done to them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I don't know. They don't know. share the raws. Yeah, and I don't know mm -hmm. if that says anything about, like, their abilities as a photographer not being professional enough or whatever enough to share the raw version of it. Yeah. But like if that person, if that's their process, would you call them a photographer or would you call them a image manipulator? I'd still call them a photographer, I think, because yeah. by that same rule, we would all have to be cutting our albums live and in one take. Yeah. And I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. I've done that on quite a few tracks, and it is very interesting, and it is its own experience, but I'm not against punching in here and there. Yeah, same, because there's yeah, a magic fine. to it. When it works, it's yeah. fucking incredible, and you always can kind of tell, like, that's one of those takes where, like, they just went in and channeled something, and it's the best. But, yeah, punching in is also the shit, because, like, it's... Yeah. There's some times where it's yeah. like, no, that's the move. Like, that's the... I want to take that piece of it. So I feel like it just... If you mean it, and if you're really just doing something mm -hmm. with your time in that moment. It can be art. It can be whatever. But we comport like a lot of different media with these senses of like aggrandized, like, I don't know. Sometimes it's like a spiritual thing. Sometimes it's just a sense of achievement, but we, it's sort of a bummer that like something like painting is what we consider to be art or something like music has got to be sitting there playing an instrument when it's like, it could kind of be Anything, you know, you could... I could bang on a trash can or drum on a streetlight and yeah. who's to say that that's not music? You yeah, know, back exactly. in the 30s yeah. in O City before Charlie Christian played electric guitar, that's what he was doing. Yeah. And that's where our fucking modern rap comes from. You know, yeah. people banging on a trash can and saying melodic words to it. So it's like, you know, the um, like the digital painting that you mentioned earlier, like I totally agree that that wouldn't be a painting because there is no paint. Like you're not painting anything. So you can't yeah. call it a painting, but it's something else, you know, and that doesn't necessarily like I couldn't fucking do that. I couldn't sit down at a computer and, and make 
anything worth looking at. So it's it is tricky. I it's I'm noticing it a lot with a lot of different um a lot of different media right now when digital stuff's getting more popular. Like it's I always have this fight with my brother over like EDM kinds of stuff. Because mm-hmm. yeah. he's really good at producing that kind of shit and we always have the the debate about like which one is valid. Is is like traditional music or traditional music production as compared to MIDI stuff is one of them more valid. And my position on it is that like a lot of those guys are musicians, but mm-hmm. what you're hearing is them as a producer. Yeah. You know, like they're separate jobs. You can be both. You can be one or the other. You can be incredible at both or one or the other. It doesn't diminish. Nothing has to be mutually exclusive, you know? Yeah. And a, a lot of people do that because they want to make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it boils down to our, what is going to produce money. It's like if I paint pictures of people's dogs and tuxedos, because that's what art school tells me makes money. Yeah. You know, that that's what art is. Yeah. It's, it's not. Um, that being said, I did know a band back in the day that I saw this for the first time. They were they were teetering on the EDM before EDM was actually kind of a thing. But mm. what they did was they played all of their instruments live and they looped and sampled them and manipulated them with some of their computer programs. But they were playing, you know... Two guys were playing a guitar, a bass, a saxophone, a violin, all these different things, but they were putting them into these computer programs and manipulating them Mm. and rapping over them and shit. And I was like, a lot of people were like, they're cheating. And I'm like, no, that's a whole nother skill level. That's that's fucking dope as shit that they're doing that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, there have to be fucking rules in order for you to be cheating. (laughs) What are the rules? There are no fucking rules. And who decides the rules? And a lot of people believe that the elite decide the rules even though if they don't understand that they are directly like contributing to that belief that they still are well yeah that's the thing like the the quote-unquote elite or maybe i shouldn't say elite but just like the people that i'm most influenced by and that i consider to be the talent most talented guitarists that i'm influenced by i can't hold myself in comparison to those people because my process is completely different and my philosophy behind what goes into composition and recording is completely different and it necessarily has to be because I'm terrible at recording. And like, for some reason I get like, regardless of whether it's probably when people are there watching me, like if there's a producer, I'm a, I'm better. Cause I feel like there's more pressure, but if I'm alone and recording myself and there's infinite takes, then I screw up a lot. Yeah. And then I get into this, my headspace where I'm like, well, why am I such a bad guitarist when I'm alone? <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm a little back and forth but, with both. Uh. Yeah, but it's like, you know, I'll I'll do several takes of a song and then pick and choose the the parts that I feel came out the best mm. and I'm really subconscious about like string squeak and and shit like that. Mm. That every acoustic guitarist that I admire is not afraid of string squeak and you hear a ton of it in the recordings. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like I'm just, it's like why am I so afraid of that? But I'm a perfectionist and I get like really hard on myself. But I don't think that doing multiple takes or like picking and choosing what were the best moments in the song and only broadcasting that and only saving that detracts at all from the artistic value of it. Because like to me, I'm trying to capture the composition and I'm not necessarily worried about capturing the moment. Yeah. Whereas a lot of artists are more concerned with capturing the raw energy of a moment. I think there's a balance of both there. Yeah, there's that a can ton be of relevant to both. depending upon the situation. Yeah, but I'm going through this right now with <laughs> with Grand Honey because we did a recording session and we did everything live, and now we're overdubbing stuff, and it's finding that balance between where was the best raw energy, where there were probably some fuck ups, and it was not like the best oh, yeah. thing to listen back to, and then where are the moments that were just like perfect, and we can like kind of record over that and overdub and polish it a little bit and there as you know and we're like partially a jam band so where are the moments that necessarily need to be raw yeah and how do we showcase and highlight those in order to keep our kind of jam band label which i don't so much care about but they do Let's and that's be a important. jam band <laughs> oh god <laughs> if i had a dollar for every weird guy who was like do you want to get together and jam Oof. let's get together and like have an art night because i feel like i can i'm going to try to weasel my way into your life by having this commonality this relatable thing yeah 
let's get together and jam. Somebody said that to Rainy recently, and she's like, what does that mean? I was like, they're trying to use a commonality to insert themselves in your life in hopes that they can form some sort of sexual relationship off of it. And she's mm. like, damn. I'm like, that's what it is. Oh, I wouldn't be waiting on this stimulus check if I had a dollar for every motherfucker who was like, you want to jam. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to fucking jam with you. I have my own shit going on. Leave me alone. I stopped saying yes to do you want to jam a long time ago. It feels good. And yeah. yeah, right? It oh, really I does. It, yeah. it's, a boy is trying to get and, at you? No, no, no. I mean, like, completely jam. different dynamic than what, than what you're talking about, of oh. course. But like, uh, no, I, I was having this conversation with Ryan Herrick the other night. Um, about like the roles that you have to recognize within a jam session or within a rehearsal or within a new band or anything. And like, mm. like you never quite feel satiated or seen or validated until you know that your role as a player has been recognized and seen by mm-hmm. the other players. And you can't all just be expected like, okay, now you take rhythm. Now you take lead. Now you take like, yeah. You don't play every single role in a band. And I feel like when you get together to jam, that's the assumption. Unless it's someone like Ryan or unless it's someone like that I really share very organic commonalities with, then I feel like I can't bring any of like my unique stylistic yeah. capabilities yeah. to the jam session. And they're just going to want to play Freebird. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> At least when somebody asks or usually asks if you two would like to jam, yeah. They are doing it because they like your music right. or because you they they value you as music. Maybe they like a couple songs that you did or they like your unique style or whatever. But when somebody says it to me, it's not for those reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They want to include me in their band because they want to be appropriative. They want it. They want a lady in their band because they think it's going to up their appeal. And that's fucked up. I'm mm-hmm. filling some kind of quota all the time. And I can do way more than that. Like I'm a, I'm a fairly decent musician and I'm very versatile and I can do, my specialty is weird shit. I can do a lot of weird shit. So if you want some weird shit, like come at me. But most people don't do that. They, they want to jam for other reasons. Well, yeah. And it sucks for me because I don't feel respected as a musician or a creative, even if somebody is like, hey, do you want to get together and play some music sometime because I respect you? When somebody says that to me, I'm like, I don't believe you. (laughs) (laughs) You're lying because that's all I know. And I I prescribe that to everybody and it's unfortunate, but that's the way I'm conditioned. And I try not to be like that. But every time I try not to be like that, I'm usually proved wrong. I mean, it makes it really hard to be open-minded or optimistic about those things when I've I've seen – Rainey's share screenshots of people saying we think it would be good for us as a band to have a female drummer. Yeah. Ugh, it's God. like, well, well, people ask me that all the time. Like I said, I worked at a manager as a manager at a music store. Everybody would come in and be like, Oh, you're a singer. You want to sing with me? You want to sing in my band? And that's like, no, I'm not a singer. And they're like, come sing in my band. <laughs> they just want me for my appeal. They don't even hear me. They're like, come sing with me. And it, it sucks. Yeah. It, it feels like people don't ever just like value me for what I do. And it's the mm-hmm. same thing with art a lot too. Like uh, I feel like a lot of people are only interested in my art because like I have a fucking vagina. And it, it makes me feel like less than what I am a lot. Because there are a lot of people who will come at me and genuinely be like, I like your art and I like your music. And again, I'm like, I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> it's that little devil in me. But I didn't make that devil in me. Other fucking people did. And when people don't come to my defense on certain things and be like, yeah, sexism exists in music. When yeah. motherfuckers come at me and be like, well, I don't listen to music because somebody is, is a woman or is pretty and that's not my own person. I'm like, yeah, I'm saying that this exists and this is a problem and it's not just a me thing. So it, it's hard to navigate when you should jam. And when you should not jam. That's yeah. That's point. <laughs> well, most of the people who suggest it, too, it just, I mean, in a different way, obviously, like, I haven't experienced it as much from that particular perspective, but the people who say that they want to jam, like, in that, would you like to come over on Thursday night and have a jam session? They just want a solo for you. Yeah. They don't want a fucking jam. 
They just want to kind of jerk off to Hendrix for like an hour yeah. and a half, and then you get to go home. It's the same thing. It's awful. So you are experiencing the same thing, but from a different sort of gender role. It's all mm. about them stroking their own ego rather than working with somebody that they, uh, you know, appear, someone that they respect, some mutual musical level. So mm. it, it's somebody trying to show you their value. And mm. their value might be different towards you. It might be like, look up to me, admire me. But in my, mm. in my aspect, it, it, it's also like, look up to me and admire me and have sex with me. Yeah. <laughs> That's, there's, yeah. what, there's another element to it. It's just a different jacking off in front of you sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. It really is an awful industry when you think about it. Like it's... Yeah. Seems like the only way to exist in it is to kind of be on an island, you know? Like, it's that's the only way to actually make it worth your fucking time. Uh, worth your time in the sense that you feel uh, personally accomplished and you're removed from society. Uh, so you can kind of be free to do what you want, yeah. And just trying to skirt these kinds of dipshits, you know? Like, these kinds of people are just... Why, you know? You can't skirt them, huh? <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> always gonna fucking be out there, and that's what sucks about it. But yeah. j just don't jam with those weirdos that are trying to jerk off in front of you. You know, if you if you need somebody to call when you feel unsafe in one of those situations <laughs> to pick you up, just like trade phone numbers with me, and you know, you could call me and be like, "This guy is jerking off in front of me. He asked uh, to jam, and I don't really know what to do." The, in a woman's world or a more feminine world will be like, I got you, bitch. I'm going to come pick you up right now. You feel unsafe? Like, tell him your big ass daddy is coming to get you. <laughs> like, that's what we do. That's what we do for one another. And it doesn't have to necessarily just be with or among women. It could be anybody. You know? but see, selfishly, I, I like those situations a little bit. I just find that it makes me mean, you know? Like, I like when somebody starts to do that because it's like... Whew, Okay, like it's fucking on now, but it's not a feeling that I like, you know? Oh. So overall, it's a negative experience. and uh, It turns into a competitive thing with you a little bit then. Yeah, it turns into war at that point. It's like, you want to fucking do this, you're going to have to keep up. And I like that challenge, but it's like, ugh, fuck guitar players, you know? I'm a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, are. Are. we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're on that same level. Fuck guitar players. <laughs> I agree. <laughs>